Hello everyone, I'm Spaghetti, and welcome to episode 5 of Best D&D Stories. I'm gonna read some D&D stories out loud to you, okay? I hope you're ready for that, okay? And if you've enjoyed this content, please click like and subscribe. And if you'd like more content similar to this one, then you can go and check out Thread Thrasher. It should be in the link below. Now, let's get into these stories. My friend had wanted to do a one-shot 5e game for Halloween and make it an annual thing. He was wanting to play a half-vampire monster hunter named Alucard Helsing, pretty much wanting to be a cross of Van Helsing from the film with Hugh Jackman and Blade. Since I was DMing and it was a one-shot for Halloween, I figured, why not? So I spent the day before the game trying to pick and choose what sort of benefits and hindrances he'd have as a half-vampire. I decided one drawback was that he couldn't gain the benefits of a long rest unless he slept in a coffin or in a graveyard. Since my friend pretty much wanted to be Van Helsing to the point where he wouldn't shut up about having rapid-fire hand crossbows that looked like 45s, that was after I told him he couldn't have actual guns, which he argued about for an hour. He got two normal hand crossbows instead. I made him a member of a monster hunting society, which only tolerated him because he was effective and its previous leader's son. After receiving a mission to investigate reports of bodies going missing, he arrived at the town in the middle of the day. He goes into an inn to rent a room for three weeks, which for 10 gold per night is 210 gold he didn't have. He decides to use his charm ability that he gets once a day. The bartender fails the wisdom save, and Alucard gets the room for cheap and drinks on the house. He has an inn worker help him with luggage, but he still has to deal with his coffin. He does a perception check to see if he can spot the window to his room and passes. Then he asks if he can levitate it in through the window. I tell him no because it's outside the bounds of 5e vampires. Then he asks if he can throw it through the window. I have him make an athletics test to see if he does, which he passes with a 17. I told him that his coffin goes flying through the window, but suffers some damage. Now, it's still the middle of the day. There are people outside the tavern who just watch this weird looking guy throw a coffin through. The bartender comes out with a cleaver to see who did it, but because he's charmed, he doesn't suspect Alucard. So Alucard goes and investigates the graveyard, and after an encounter, with some skeletons, he returns to his room. Later, he hears a knock on his door. He opens it up to see the bartender and two guards outside. One guard says to him, We hear you've caused a disturbance here. Alucard asks, What kind of disturbance? Guard replies with, Like throwing coffins into windows. Alucard denies it, in which the guard replies by saying they have at least 20 witnesses who saw this in broad daylight. At this point, Alucard decides to escape by backflipping towards the broken window. He succeeds, but one guard manages to grab and tackle him to the floor mid-flip. He decides to feed on the guard. While he's doing that, the other guard knocks him out. He wakes up in a cell, tied in chains that feel like they've been doused in holy oil, which makes him powerless. He rolls to break free and succeeds, but it causes a lot of noise. As soon as he does, a cleric comes flying in the room and stakes him in the heart, paralyzing him. Alucard thinks the man is here to help him with the skeletons and to get him out of this misunderstanding. He's dead wrong. The man was a cleric of Bahamut, who was a member of the same order. He had been sent to collect them for trial. He asks him if he fed on an innocent, which he denies. So Alucard gets put into a holy box that makes him powerless. He decides to sleep the whole journey. He wakes up to the sound of rushing water and the angry shouts of about a hundred monster hunters. He's asked by the Grand Master if he fed on an innocent. He denies it several times, but in his rage for being locked up, confesses to feeding on the guy by accident. So he gets dropped into a river and takes enough acid damage to kill him. Afterwards, I told him, the guards just wanted him to pay a five gold vandalism f I think Alucard Helsing is from an anime or something. That said, it's pretty frustrating when people try to play anime edgelords in games where the goal is not to be an anime edgelord. If all the other people are playing serious characters, please don't make some cursed half-vampire Dracula in disguise loner with double pistols. Pathfinder, so not quite D&D but very similar. Anyways, I have a psionics character that can forcefully enter the minds of others and telepathically talk to them, etc. We were trying to get into a government-like building but the guards wouldn't let us in, so my other party member convinced him of a horrible monster on the way and we needed to let the king know right away. This monster will show himself to you in your thoughts when you're marked. He will hunt you down shortly. This is of course when I enter his mind and show him the monster. He freaks and we are let in. While in there, an official type person knows we shouldn't be there. I flirt with her, distract her, and convince her to get a drink with me. While at the bar, I drink heavily. Once I'm good and fucked up, I transfer ailments with my mind entering ability. She passes out surely to forget the entire night and I stroll out of the bar like nothing happened. The perfect heist. 
My group spent almost half an hour trying to shake down a news board for information, a wooden board that has information periodically nailed or painted on. I have a D100 table of quirky little information, some of which are hooks, most of which are gags. They give their news and try to get more information, so they make a few checks. They roll to intimidate. The board does not react, but some water condenses on it which slightly resembles sweat. They roll to persuade. The board is flattered, but it isn't talking. Arcana check. No magic. Nature check. They figure out exactly what kind of wood it's where it came from. They basically do everything short of assaulting it. While they didn't glean any more information, it did serve as a good opportunity to introduce them to a group of children who were looking for help to deal with the undead haunting the swimming hole. I was with a party of five about halfway through the story arc our GM spent months working on. We were walking back to the main city after a side quest. We were stopped when we heard the big baddie being introduced for the first time was projecting his voice. And since our friend made him a bit of a show-off, he was entering in in a streaming ball of flames. Our DM rolled a 1. The baddie's wand snapped in half. He rolled another 1. The baddie had no way of getting himself out of dodge. The DM rolled a third 1. The other spell wands he had on him snapped due to the explosion of the other one. Since this was the big boss, he was rocking 15 plus wands of varying damage spells with 50 charges each. The boss then smashed into the ground. Essentially, we recreated the Tsar Bomba just outside of the main city. Three-fifths of the group rolled below five and were vaporized. I rolled much higher and ended up taking reduced damage after my math and some spells for damage evasion I had. Our fifth person rolled a 20 and essentially rode the shockwave away. I had my party, I was DM, come across a murder mystery. A woman's husband was murdered in their farmhouse, crushed or pummeled violently to death. The local guard figured the wife did it, because when the party asked her what happened, she claimed, it was a moose, in a horrified voice. Needless to say, that didn't fly with the party either, especially with the nature check showing that moose were not native to the area. Fast forward a little, just after the party questioned a posh wizard in the woods gathering herbs to the nearby town where the party decided they might as well get a little hammered, an important detail. The group found the local guard ready and eager to go kill the posh wizard who supposedly owns a moose. The locals hated him. Now the group couldn't well let that happen, so they headed to meet the posh wizard. Bringing a drunk and naked bum they found in the woods along with. Couldn't just let him freeze to death, I guess. Anyways, they meet with the wizard who claims he's been attempting alchemy and magic experiments on his moose to grant him sentience. The group asks him to stand outside while they examine his precious moose. We aren't really gonna kill this moose, are we? The rogue asks. The paladin, who was drunk as shit at this point because he was going through a very difficult time, stirred and threatened the moose, and everyone got a chuckle as he asked, Moose, did you kill that lady's husband? They laughed harder when the moose replied, No! You see, the wizard was successful. But when I say posh, I mean I made him sound as annoying as possible. Everyone hated him. So when the moose begged them to not tell him he had gained sentience, they weren't shocked. A rumbling from the party's cart had alerted the party to danger, and as the full moon floated high in the sky, a half-moose, half-human hybrid rose from where they had stashed the drunken bum. The wizard had been dumping his failed moose elixirs into the river, which was the town's local water supply, also water that had been within the watered-down ale they drank. He had inadvertently created were mooseism, along with cursing several drunken party members. The party killed the wizard for what he did and for threatening to stop them from curing his moose's sentience, and killed several townsfolk trying to protect the uncursed. Luckily, Mustafar, as the sentient moose like to be called, was a highly intelligent creature and cured the were moose curse before the alchemical elixirs within him took his life. My players loved it. After a couple of years of campaigning with the same heroes, we begged the DM to let us roll up evil characters and play them. He resisted this until we badgered him relentlessly for a while. Finally, he said fine, and so we spent the rest of a session making up the most dastardly characters that we could. Weirdly, the DM let us start at the same level as our regular characters. When the game started, he repurposed the map of the town that we'd secured and protected to use as a base, changing the name of the stock characters. Neither of these things gave us pause, but they should have. We rolled into the town like an apocalyptic motorcycle gang and proceeded to rob, murder, and pillage. I'm actually uncomfortable thinking about it now because we were laughing it up so much while we invented creative ways to be cruel. If you've ever seen footage of big predators who go wild in an enclosure of helpless prey animals, killing everything instead of just what they can eat, then you have some idea. We were the Sava Lions for about six hours.
Then, the DM collected our character sheets on the excuse that he wanted to look at them and copy our work onto NPCs for future gameplay. Here again, none of us thought too much about what he was doing. You can probably guess where this is going. When our heroes returned from their quest the next week, the town was a smoking hole in the ground. Everything we had stored there was gone, and all the NPC townsfolk we had known and defended were dead. And we had a brand new quest, revenge. We spent maybe three or four months tracking down our evil characters and distributing justice. My friend the DM came up with the great campaign we're currently running. We all played kobold characters. He concocted individual starting stories for us to play separately before we became a party. These individual stories were designed to introduce us to our character's backstory and provide some insight to kobolds living in a huge dense society. My character, a kobold wizard, was nearly assassinated at birth because of my heritage. He was a rich kobold and a leader of one of the high-ranking kobold clans. It was prophesied that someone of my lineage would kill him, so he wanted to prevent that. He didn't succeed in killing me obviously, but he thought he did. After my intro, I decided to sneak into his house to gain some info on why he wanted me dead. My father was the resident wizard for the Cobalt Leader, so I talked to him about methods to sneak into my assassin's house. My father had some potions that would work. One potion would shrink me down, but would leave a puddle of goop of my mass that was slowed off. The second potion would absorb nearby biological material to reinstate me to my original size. The DM created these potions assuming I would return to my goop puddle, drink the second potion, and reabsorb my goop to return to my original size. I instead used this potion in a way the DM never suspected. I drank the first potion just outside the assassin's home. I snuck through his home and gained the information that I wanted while he was having dinner and conversing with his high priestess about his successful assassination of me. I then waited until he was sound asleep, snuck into his room, and positioned myself right next to his head. Then I drank the second potion. I absorbed his head to reconstitute my body to its original size, effectively killing him. One of the female kobolds in his harem that he regularly abused then helped me sneak out the front door. That was my most epic night of D&D by far. It was me and all my friends first time playing except for the DM. It's been probably close to 10 years since it happened so I might be fuzzy on details. For a little bit of context, one of my friends is pretty much equal to bad luck Brian and that a lot of bad luck shit happens to him. So I'll call him Brian and my other friend Fred. We had more people playing but the main story these guys. Anyway. Our quest, I think, was a pretty basic quest that our DM told us it normally takes around 30 minutes to complete. I think it was something about rescuing some NPC. In our first fight, the enemies attacked Fred, and Fred decided to use Brian as cover for some arrows, and Brian ended up rolling a 1, and he died. Fred decided to use his body as a meat shield, but he mounted him on his enlarged dick. So we go through the quest with Brian's body on Fred's dick, taking numerous arrows as shield. Eventually, Fred comes back to life, and Brian's dick now has a hard-on meter between 0 and 100. 100 being a raging, enlarged boner that he rolls for on his turns. We end up finding a treasure chest with a lock on it, and we are supposed to find the key. But Fred has a better idea that we lockpick it with his dick. His boner has to be, I think, like 90 or higher, and he rolls for it and gets it. The DM just sighs, it goes through. It took us two hours to do that 30 minute. One time my brother and some friends and I were out and had some time to kill so we decided to play some D&D. &D. We didn't have any character sheets or paper but my brother had his D20 and we decided to have him DM. Since we weren't playing a serious D&D &D game, me and my friends decided to make our characters absolutely ridiculous. I was playing as a Warforged, basically an automaton, who was originally the loyal butler of a wealthy noble. One day, the noble commanded me to cut his sandwich in half. However, he was very vague in his directions. He simply gestured at the sandwich and ordered, cut it in half. So I cut the sandwich in half, and the plate, and the table, and him. And so to this day, my character zealously carries out his master's order to cut it in half. As for my friends, their characters were Craig the Cthulhu Man, a strange squid man who was also a wizard, Rex, a gnome whose life goal was to become the edgiest being in existence, with his motorcycle and sharpie drawn beard, but sadly suffered from chronic cuteness. He spent most of our session watching events unfold around him while smoking and making deep comments. 
and a were yak man, whose name I can't remember. The yak man was half man, half yak creature that existed in my brother's universe who was a were yak, meaning that every full moon he turned into a full yak. He walked around with the staff of transmutation, basically a webajack from Skyrim, that could transform an object into another random object. I can tell more if anybody wants. And them's the breaks for now. Well, guys, uh, do you guys have any more interesting D&D stories? Anything uh, anything recent? Why don't, you, why don't you let us know in the comments? T tell us about it, man. And uh, if you if you like this, if you enjoyed this, why don't you leave a like? And if you haven't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and do that? If you like videos like this, in this style, then go check out Thread. We've got tons of more variety in voices and categories. So go, go check it out, man. Go do it. This is spaghetti. Hope you guys have a good day. Peace. All those moments will be lost.